I was bored on the 9th of October 1940 when I believe the nasties were still booming us, led by Madolf Hitlum, who only had one. Anyway, they didn't get me. At least if you're born at the bottom, you're told that you're nothing, you either accept it or you, you, know, you try and set out to do something about it. I mean, that's why I was thrown out of college, that's why I was always getting expelled on it. And all that, I've been me all the time, and that's him, you know, I've been Lennon all down the line. Thank you very much, John. It's a big cigarette. I will... A big man. Ha! I will light it down. <laughs> he was the, uh, the strongest, most dominant person in the early days, because he was absolutely so sort of iconoclastic and outrageous and did amazing things and he was tough and he was cynical and he I mean the Beatles is the sum of the whole and that's really what John gave to them they influenced me they influenced all of us we meant more to kids than Jesus did or religion at that time I wasn't knocking it or putting it down I was just saying it as a fact it was the Beatles, really, who, who awoke us all to, to uh, music in the 60s. I don't think we'd have heard it without the Beatles. The happiest time of my life was in India, in some kind of pit, you know, because I was meditating eight hours a day and things like that. And it was really some trip, like... We would actually meet again in India, where I would teach him certain things about folk music that he needed to know. <laughs> I'm creating a lot more than just the records, just with Yoko, and just all the time, you know, I can't stop, you know, that's my gig. And I've always done it. As a kid, it was making puppets or drawing or writing poetry, whatever it is. That's my gig on earth. Millions will remember exactly what they were doing, where they were, who they were with, that moment when they heard that John Lennon was dead.